And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now, the Detroit Lions, despite not starting their actual training camp for another week or so, have made a couple of roster moves over the last couple of days, whether that be cutting a player, signing a new player, trading for a new player, or placing certain players on NFI lists and the roster has changed fairly significantly over the last couple of days in the last 24 hours especially today I wanted to take a look at the new roster take a look at the most recent roster moves of the Detroit Lions and just kind of give my opinion my thoughts and kind of give an updated look of how this Detroit Lions team looks less than a week away from the start of mandatory training camp. So starting off with the newest releases, Michael Badgley was recently cut by the Detroit Lions. Last season, Michael Badgley was signed partway through the season after the Detroit Lions had some massive kicking struggles weeks one through three, including a missed field goal to essentially lose the game versus the Minnesota Vikings. Now, Michael Badgley came in and despite not being perfect, was a much needed upgrade to the kicking position from what they had previously. Michael Badgley last season had an 83% field goal make percentage along with a 100% extra point make percentage. He had a long of 53 on the season, including a game tying field goal on Thanksgiving versus the Buffalo Bills that should have sent the Detroit Lions to overtime but unfortunately, we all know how that one ended. Michael Badgley was a good kicker, was not a great kicker, was a reliable player within 40 yards and a suspect kicker beyond 50 yards. He missed a couple easy ones, but also made a couple really crucial and really difficult kicks throughout the season and kept the Detroit Lions in several games and even won the Detroit Lions a number of games with his field goal kicking. Now, throughout this offseason, the Detroit Lions clearly felt like the kicking position is something they still needed to address, something they still needed to work on so they went out and they traded a seventh round pick for Riley Patterson from the Jacksonville Jaguars as well as going out and signing XFL kicker Parker Romo who again was a very very good kicker in the XFL a season ago and clearly seemed to be a better kicker throughout training camp now I've heard that throughout mini camps and OTAs Riley Patterson has had his ups and downs being really good on some days and having some really inaccurate kicks other days but I've also heard that Parker Romo has been the best kicker so far at mini camp and OTAs and is as of right now likely to be the kicker number one they clearly felt like Badgley was the odd man out they didn't want to carry three kickers into the preseason as it's really hard to get kickers a equal amount of time when there's three of them to get on the field so they made the decision that Michael Badgley was the odd man out. And unfortunately for him, he is probably not going to be a Detroit Lion come next season. But I do think that he was good enough last year to warrant getting some kind of kicking job in the NFL. And I do believe he will land somewhere in the NFL as he is a better kicker than what some teams are working with at the moment. But as of right now, it seems as though the Detroit Lions will move forward with Riley Patterson and Parker Romo as their kicking competition continues. Now, taking a look at at the NFI list. The Detroit Lions placed three players on the non-football injury list yesterday, that being former third-round pick Hendon Hooker, former UDFA Derek Dees, and former UDFA Zach Morton. Now, starting off with Hendon Hooker, we all know who Hendon Hooker is, right? A third-round selection in the 2023 NFL Draft, the reigning SEC Offensive Player of the Year, who last year, before tearing his ACL in 11 games, passed for 3,135 yards, 27 touchdowns to just two interceptions. Now, there's obviously a lot of good and a lot of bad with Hendon Hooker, right? There's, of course, the high ceiling. There's the really good deep ball. There is the accurate passer, the really strong arm, the really good leader. And then, of course, there is the age concerns. There is the injury ACL concerns. There's a lot of ups and downs, a lot of green flags, a lot of red flags for Hendon Hooker. But as of right now, it does seem as though Hendon Hooker likely will not play during the preseason, despite very recently getting on the field with some of his teammates and very recently starting to throw a couple balls after practice. Hendon Hooker 
is on the path to recovery. He is ahead of schedule from most reports, but that does not mean he is quite ready to play. As he is now on the NFI list, there is a chance that he could come back before the preseason. Being on the NFI list means that you can come back at any point throughout the preseason, at any point throughout training camp, and be activated from that list. However, if the Lions do make it to week one, just like the rest of these players and Hendon Hooker or any of the other two are not removed from the NFL, as they will need to miss the first month of the season as they will be forced to sit out at least four games until they can be removed from that list in the regular season. Now, I'm not totally sure if Hendon Hooker is going to be ready for the preseason. I know we still have about another month until the preseason actually arrives. So who knows? His progression could get uh, his progression could get a lot better. He could, you know, potentially be ready for the preseason, but based off the comments of head coach Dan Campbell, based off the comments of GM Brad Holmes, it does seem as though Hendon Hooker is going to take more or less of a red shirt season and probably sit out most, if not all, of the 2023 season and probably slowly get integrated into the offense, slowly start learning the offense from the sidelines, and eventually going into next season, be that backup and hopefully even push Jared Goff for the QB1 position, as I do believe Hendon Hooker has a higher upside. I do think he is, of course, a cheaper option and could be a really good quarterback for the Detroit Lions, but we're going to have to wait and see as Hendon Hooker currently is being placed on the NFI list. Now, moving on to the second player on that non-football injury list is going to be Derek Deese Jr., who was a UDFA in 2022 who was a UDFA in 2022 and last in his last season at San Jose State, his senior year, totaled over 730 receiving yards and four touchdowns. Now, despite being a UDFA, Derek Deese was looked at as one of the better tight ends in the 2022 class. He's a player that didn't go drafted. Obviously, he was a UDFA, but it was a fairly weak tight end class overall, and he was looked at as one of the better UDFA pickups by most Lions fans and even most of the NFL media. Now, Derek Deese has struggled with injuries his last two seasons and really hasn't been able to find the field. The Detroit Lions clearly liked him as a UDFA, but more recently have turned to other players. They've turned to James Mitchell. They've turned to Brock Wright. They've turned into drafting Sam Laporta into their new offense. And of course, Shane Zalstra, after a very strong season last year, is another member of that tight end group. And unfortunately for Derek Deese, a promising young player has quickly turned into a player that likely will not make the roster or will be stashed among the practice squad players as he is continuing to suffer through some injuries. And then the most recent of UDFAs for the Detroit Lions is is Zach Morton, a player that started his playing career at Syracuse, transferred to Akron, and as a 2023 NFL draft prospect, did go undrafted, but was picked up as a priority UDFA by the Detroit Lions. Throughout his three seasons in college football, Zach Morton totaled 10 tackles for loss, five and a half sacks, two interceptions, two passes, three passes defended, and two fumble recoveries. Now, Zach Morton is a player that I don't think is going to end up making the active roster just because the defensive line depth that we have is really, really strong, right? They have, of course, Isaiah Bugs. They have Aline McNeil. They have Levi Anwuzuriki, if healthy. They just signed Christian Covington. They have... John Kaminsky, if he is going to play on the interior, they have some really good, strong players on that defensive line. And if you move to the edge rusher position, it gets even more competition and even more difficult to make the roster from that position. So I do think Zach Morton, despite being a relatively good, a relatively talented young player, I do think that the depth on the defensive line is going to keep him from making the active roster. But I think that if he is healthy by the time the preseason comes around, he could be a player to watch in the preseason, could be a fun player to keep an eye on as we continue to move through the preseason as well as training camp. Now, the last bit of news over the last couple of days is going to be about some rookies. As Jameer Gibbs and Brian Branch have both signed to their rookie contracts, being the last two of the rookie class to do so in completing the Detroit Lions 2023 draft class, all fully signed for the next four seasons. Now, Jameer Gibbs, of course, was the 12th overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft, an explosive playmaker from Alabama, a player that is expected to get a lot of touches, a lot of carries for the Detroit Lions, and expected to be one of the most explosive weapons on the Detroit Lions already top five offense. He signed his four-year contract a couple of days ago, and about 24 hours later, 
Brian Branch did the same thing. The safety also from Alabama, an Alabama duo here, has also signed his rookie contract, a four-year deal with the Detroit Lions, keeping him in Detroit through 2027, a player that is expected likely not to have the biggest role in year one as he learns a very complicated defensive role playing multiple defensive positions, but is expected to have some role on the special teams, some role on the defense, and is expected to be a long-term playmaker on the Detroit Lions with his versatility at safety, his versatility at linebacker, his versatility as a slot slash nickel cornerback, and really his versatility at every defensive position on the football field. Brian Branch has incredible defensive instincts. He's a player that will make a lot of defensive plays when he sees the field, and I do think he could see the field a lot as a rookie, but I think he will take a massive leap going into year two with a more expanded role and a bigger workload as a Detroit Lions defender. But both of those players have officially signed their contracts around along with the rest of their 2023 draft class teammates, officially, once again, completing the 2023 draft and completely and completing this segment of the Detroit Lions offseason news. So with that being said, that is all we have for you guys today. The biggest news of the Detroit Lions, their biggest roster moves, including Michael Badgley being cut. Of course, we talked about Zenzel Mims being traded for yesterday. We have now the entire rookie class signed, as well as a couple of players, unfortunately, being placed on the non-football injury list. Let me know down in the comments below how you feel about all of it, how you feel about Badgley being cut, how you feel about the NFI list, how you feel about the Gibbs and Branch signings and what you think they're going to do this season. I'd be very curious to hear what you guys think about all of it. But with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, and as always, go Lions.